welcome back to my kitchen. We haven't been here since we did the England on a Plate series, which finished, I think, May this year. And if you haven't had a look at it, go to the English Counties page and have a look. But while we were doing the Halloween video with Little Hawk Forest School, um, Molly told us about soul cakes. And I thought, well, why don't we show you how to make soul cakes? But I'm not wearing my apron because, as I didn't tell you about the salt cakes, why do I have to do all the work? Exactly, well done. So, I've invited Molly and to uh, make the salt cakes, which she is going to do. Now, we have a rule in this kitchen. First thing you have to do, roll your sleeves up. Oh, ah, ready made. <laughs> well done. And wash your hands. You do that, and I will tell you, no, I won't tell you anything. We'll show you some pictures from Halloween at the forest school, which you didn't see, and then we're gonna tell you the ingredients, okay? The ingredients that you'll need are 450 grams of plain flour, 175 grams of butter, which some nice man has cut into little cubes because it's easier to use them like that. <gasps> Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Um, you'll need 175 grams of caster sugar, two teaspoons of mixed spice, 100 grams of currants, uh, three eggs. But you'll only need the yolks, so we're going to have to see you separate the yellow from the white. Ah, okay. You'll also need a dash of milk to bind everything together. The utensils that you'll need are two bowls, a mixer. And that mixer, for those of you who watched England on the plate, is twice as old as Molly. Ah. Twice as intelligent too. I heard that. You'll need a sieve, a wooden spoon, a rolling pin, a biscuit cutter and a knife. It doesn't have to be a sharp knife, perhaps just a butter knife, or a dinner knife will do. You'll also need a baking tray. So to begin with, we are going to be creaming the butter with the sugar. So in goes the butter that Richard has very kindly cubed. I could do with a spoon, however. <laughs> in the drawer. That this drawer. One. Yep. Here we go. You may need a spoon just to help you uh, get all the butter out there. There we are. And I've had this trouble with Molly Berry. <laughs> Next, you need your sugar. In goes all the sugar, and now you're ready to get your mixer and mix it all together. If you're having trouble mixing in the butter with your with the sugar, you can take a, a fork and mush it in like this just to get you started and then you can finish it off with the mixer. Oh, it's getting there. Move it out of the way, right. Eventually it should look something like this and now is the time we are going to add in our egg yolks. So now we're going to add the three eggs and you may need a jug to help you with this or a mug or a glass or something that you can put the egg whites in. So with your egg, crack it on the side, crack it open but you want to keep it sort of upright so that the, the yolk stays sitting there and then to separate the yolk from the whites you just need to gently push it into the other egg shell until most of the white has dripped into the jug.
and then you can add it into there. Now for the next one, there you go. Can you see that right? My hand's yeah. in the way. No, I could that one, that was good, like that, yeah. Ooh, ooh, broke the yoke there, but it doesn't matter. Now for the final one, I'm doing well here. No shell yet. Even though I'm talking to the wrong camera. <laughs> I'm doing well here. So far, so good. This is a bit tricky. Eggs are very slippery and can easily slip into the whites, but there we go. That is all three egg yolks in the bowl, whites separated, and now you take your mixer and mix that all together. Once you've mixed it, it should now look something like this. You can now put this aside and get your next bowl ready to add the other ingredients in. Now you take your sieve and your flour and then just tap the sides to sieve it all through so it's all light and fluffy. This might take a little while. There we go. Can you see how light and fluffy that looks now? Powdery, no lumps. Next, you will sift in your mixed spices. Here they go. Oh, that smells delicious. Now I'm going to put all of the raisins in. So now you're going to add all of the things from the second bowl into the first bowl. There we are. Next take your wooden spoon and gently mix it all together. This may take a while. <laughs> get to a point where you may need to get your hands in there because it's too hard to mix with a spoon. Do not be afraid. <laughs> oh, already is a bit. Still quite a lot of flour there to mix in. Once that's all mixed in it won't be so sticky. I may need your assistance, Richard. Could you please dust the side in flour for me, please? 31 recipes done on my own. No assistance. Fuck from you, Albert, of course. You were very good. <laughs> Do you like me to smooth the flour over a bit? Oh, yeah. It covers a bit Excellent. Yes. You make a fine assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's on the side, you can really start mixing it together a bit better. Almost there. Right, if I wash my hand, I'll try and get as much of that off a second. <laughs> right. So now we are going to start rolling it out and you may just need extra uh, flour, extra flour so that it doesn't get stuck to the work surface like that has. <laughs> Thank you Richard. Right, let me make sure. It's all covered in flour. Ooh. Where's the uh, mold then? Thank you. I also like to put some flour on the rolling pin as well. 
then here we go. Roll away. It's a bit of a misshapen, isn't it? I'm going to turn it over. Oh, it's looking good. We've got loads here, haven't we? We'll make lots out of this. It's about a centimetre thick. So you roll until it's about a centimetre thick, which this pretty much is, isn't it? Would you agree? Just want to get that corner over there. There we go. Don't worry about it not being a perfect shape. Next you'll need your cookie cutter and we're going to go right to the edge, cut one out, doesn't matter if there's excess on the side. Place onto your baking tray which should be greased with butter. Don't worry if you can't cut any more out because you can squish it all back together and roll it out again. Um, so once they are all laid out on the tray, you can now get your knife ready to put the cross on the top of them. From what we know, that is what makes these distinctive soul cakes. So don't push too far down, <laughs> just a slight indent like that. You don't need a sharp knife at all. So now it's time to put our soul cakes into the oven, but you do need adult help. <laughs> adult here. Take your soul cakes and put them into the oven. You should have turned the oven on and preheated it to about 170 degrees if you have a fan, 190 degrees if your oven doesn't like you. Right, you leave those for between 10 and 15 minutes. Once they're looking golden brown, that means that they're ready to take out of the oven. And for this, you'll need an adult. Adult here. I'll show you. Right, so open the oven door. Even if you're an adult, be careful because a lot of steam will come out. If you wear glasses, you could be in real trouble. Ooh, and brown. take them out. And there you have your soul cakes. And what you do is you need to leave them to cool for a little bit. And then we can try them. So we've let them cool, and now is the time to try them. And these, again, were given to those that were poor, the poor children. Let's see what they're like. Hang on a minute. They're oh. for children. The adults can't eat them, can they now? Watch. Oh. 